Okay. It works. I'll just leave it on. Send that a lot, that particular one. I don't, whatever, whatever is okay. I'm coming, I'll be right there. Chompy chompy. My water glass, I only have so much space by this computer. I was just like, let me give them all the rest of this before it goes, becomes not fresh. Finish off the last little crust. Just they're very particular. I wasn't sure they eat it. Well, they don't eat it with you. Okay. <laughs> Pep, gave, Pep just gave you a very deep look. <laughs> Pep just was like this when you came. Sure. The charger too. Even the early birds haven't tried to check in yet. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that I could do that, but I was sitting around myself. So which one do you want to be on camera today? Hmm? You have to have what? Eat those, eat those gelatis that you have, baby cuddles. Here. Don't forget it. Just forget lettuce that's right in front of them and they get pretzels looking up at me like that's you or something, but then I said, hey, right, I'm going to go. 
Right? It's like out of their sight of line of vision or something? I'm sure it does. Um, yeah, I, I kind of noticed, but I didn't do it yet. You want to just pop in baby tomatoes at will, it's right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, they have to be even more so now that they all fell in those dirty boxes. I wash them anyway, but. I did some sheets, but it's not all the sheets. No, I'll do it with towels. Like, Majority of what's in there, weirdly, is it's more hand towels than towels, always. So I um, uh, I wipe down the. Oh, Hello. Oh, the red. Yes. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, but I, I don't want, so then you can cancel the Lambrisco, totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fine if you cancel that. And, um, yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Um, how, what's the price difference between the one uh, that you have and the one that I ordered? Sure, of course. Um, so then can we just do the one bottle of it instead of the two? Is that okay? Okay. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. You too. Take care. Well, they do. Like I don't feel like talking to anybody. That's why I'm working online. Right. That's all. 
Have and you? I don't know what your fucking. Yeah. I don't know what your swapping is. You know. What I mean? Yeah, I don't know what you have. You. If if our store, store if our store you pro I mean you for the mo for the most part you would know what they had. Yeah, but I'm getting something that Gina gave us once, the Lembers go. Oh. And we like it. I think it's the same one. Well, they don't have it. They're like, you want a different Lambros go? I'm like. Well, I'm gonna. Sure. I'll ask Gina know. where she got hers, and we'll go get it one day. I'm just saying, like, you can tell me all you want. I just, it, just I don't want it to cost more. And right, right, right. Just tell me you don't, don't carry it. Suck. Like, it's probably gonna suck. Right. Okay, whatever. You can just say no sometimes. I said no. He was like, "Well, we got another one," and I'm like, okay, "They still gotta refund me because it's like gonna be less money." So. Try it. What the hell is going on now? Oh, no, it's okay, Kathy. It's okay. Fire truck? Um, Because <laughs> you said crap, I say. I don't know. Just is. Hey. All right. Good luck, babe. Hello? Hey. Hey, Makai. What's going on, man? Nothing much. How are you doing? All right, I like that bit. That bit looks a little bushier. That's not you know, it's a little bushier than normal. This is the second growth of it. Like I shaved <laughs> it all off because this thing is so long. Yeah. And when I went back to work, and then I was just like, I don't care. What does it matter, right? Yeah, yeah. And I grew it. I grew it back. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. To see all, you how, are, how are you holding up? Congrats on your uh, new chapbook. Thank you. Thank you. Is yeah, that I'm holding Thomas's up. Press, the, the Staten Island Press. Yeah, um, nice eye. Nice eye, right. Congrats, that's cool. It's mistaken identity crisis, right? Is that yes. what it's called? Okay. Because yep. I was getting it confused with the old, the other book for a second. Yeah. It both starts with M. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, we just, we, uh, I do my little, like, thing with the poetry prompts at the beginning, and then yeah. the open mic, whoever shows up this time, and then, um, then you. Yeah. Okay, not a problem. I, I had something for the prompt, but you know, I've, I've always, that's what I always liked about Risk of Discovery. I like those prompts. Well, you, you know, you and a handful of others. There's a guy, there's yeah. several guys who like always did it on the spot. And I, or Matt Waters and this guy, Ron Colm. Yeah. You probably met, he's real old. Yeah, no, I know Ron yeah. Colm. Right. Definitely Ron Colm, yeah. yeah he, he, he always does it. I'm like, oh, yeah. thank God. Like, he just loves assignments. <laughs> so. No, but it's, it's good because, see, the thing with the prompts is, you're going to write something that you would not have written, especially the way that you do the prompts, like, you know, use these five words. Right. Like the one that I did, I wouldn't have used those. There's no way I was going to be using them five words. Right. And, I mean, normally I, I even wouldn't use those words. I just was yeah. like, I, sometimes I get the, you know, not writer's block, just yeah. like I exhaust what I, I have to write about. Yeah. You know, we writers, we all repeat the same subjects. So it's like to make it fresh. Exactly. Yeah, and and you know what I what I found because what I what I found is well this is a tip like if I was discussing writing with other writers, sometimes you can use like if you had something you wanted to write about, mm -hmm. but you you know you just can't find a way to write about it, right? Use the writing prompt, you know, because then at least that gives you like a, a starting a place to start from, you know. No, it's true. I mean, I don't like rely on it, but like yeah. I have generated some work for manuscripts that like one that I'm working on that's knock on wood going to happen in December. Yeah. Uh, like some of those come from some of those come from that or just I gave myself a project like yeah. use this theme 
and see how many poets poems you can generate from that theme, you know, because yeah. th the press is supposedly like thematic things, but it has I haven't had any luck with them yet. Okay. This is like a grant. Someone's has got a New York State grant, and they published a anthology, Poets of Queens anthology. The lady okay. that, and she has money for. She's like, why don't we put out a small book? <laughs> nice, nice. And I was just like, yes, I am tired of waiting for this. Yeah. I don't have money like for my like my parents aren't going to give me five thousand to like self publish. You know? Yes, right, right, yeah. Some people do that, or they spend their own money. Yeah. I mean, I'll have to. I'll do. A, I'll spend a little money to promote. If I have to, or make a website, I need to make a real website. I just have a Weebly thing. Hey, Gina. Uh, hey. How are hey. you? Hello. How are you? All right. This is our feature oh. MA Dennis, Gina, who Hi. works at the library, <laughs> one of the libraries. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay. Wh which nice one do you work you. at? Nice to meet you, too. I, I'm right now, I'm at Jackson Heights, um, okay. normally Elmhurst, but they're closed, so. Okay. They're having trouble opening the big ones because it's hard to yeah. social. Hey, hey, hey Kelly. For, for a second, I thought Linda Hamilton was joining in. I saw Linda <laughs> Hamilton. I, I saw Linda uh, Hamilton. Uh, uh, you hear course. that, Kelly? She said you look like he said you look huh? like. No, I saw her pop up on the screen. I don't know if that's <laughs> like your, your screensaver or something. Oh. I see. I saw there yeah, was a picture of Linda Hamilton for a second. Maybe. The I don't know. Behind <laughs> us, that. There's Billy Holiday behind us. No, it was um, <laughs> Kelly. I don't know. It was Kelly's computer, probably. I oh, think. oh, you're right. You're probably. It's probably her. It's probably her computer. It's funny. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. Hi, Dina. Hey. hey. Good if, to if, see if, you. We, if any of us need. Hi, to Ma. Do you go by Ma? That's fine. Yeah. That's that's one of my many things I go by. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we'll give everyone a few more minutes. There's a, I don't, no I don't, some people like I give them the Zoom link and they still, you know, they forget it or they don't know how to do it or. <laughs> yeah, mine just works like that. I didn't have to put in any stuff, so. Zoom is easier than your WebEx. The library uses WebEx yes. and it's very clunky. And we're doing a series with VJMA, if you know him. Yeah, I know VJ. Yeah, and it's just, WebEx doesn't work that well. Hey, Noah. Hey, man. How are you? How are you doing? All right. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. Hold on. I'm holding in there. Yeah. Right I only work two days a week in person, so it's not, it's, it's okay. <laughs> you know, the end of the world has its perks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, run out, probably run out of food at some point because no one's helping anyone, but, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, we'll make, we'll make sure we always have something to drink. <laughs> There you go. Well, as long as you have the right sustenance. Yes. Anyway, that um, uh, uh, M.A., uh, you should meet Noah. This is uh, Noah Levin. This is M.A. Dennis, our feature. Nice to meet you, Noah. Noah's hey, also man. a uh, spoken word uh, specialist uh, of, of sorts. Cool. <laughs> cool, man. I look forward to hearing your stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. All right, The Shining. Uh, go back to The Shining. <laughs> I, always, I always test to see if people can get that one. <laughs> the car I'll never forget the carpet. Every time I'm in a hotel, I look at the carpet. Look at the carpet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Noah, you want me to add you to the open mic? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, I have to wait a few minutes because all the people who signed up for the open mic haven't come in yet. <laughs> All right, uh, no, admit, admit, no. You know, if everyone wants, like, I, don't, I sent everyone poetry prompts if you want to do one right now while we're waiting. You could, you could, you could do it. Right. I'll just listen. <laughs> I just throw random pressure at people and see if it, anyone listens, but... I mean, they're kind of cool, you know, but I, and I remember I tried to do one and I'm like, mm, I'll just listen to people. Right. One of these days I will do one of those. I promise you. Okay. It's...
Did I? Is that Francis? Okay. Oh, did you hear her? Yeah, I heard her. <laughs> yeah, she 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 jumped up on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> People's cats always I come with the Zoom readings. <laughs> Francis, come here. Yeah, she knows something's going on. She hears other people. Right. The guinea pigs are the same way, but uh, they also don't care. Hey, Matt. How you doing? I have to unmute. Oh, you got it. All right. Yes. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Hey, good to see you too. How are you holding yeah, up? Man. Not bad, you know. Just trying my best. <laughs> Keep it together. I, know. I see you like on your Instagram, like running around doing stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i got yeah we gotta we, we try we're trying to say you know while staying safe trying to go out and uh have some fun here or there right. yeah like you're like in a forest i see a lot of people are in the, like they're in nature you know? <laughs> retreating to to the woods yeah yeah i've done that a couple of times forest park actually that's forest park i know people who have moved also to more rural, you know, yeah, or the luxury of someone who has a house out there who let them use it. Yeah, yeah, the apocalyptic strategy, head <laughs> to nature, tied out. I, I get it. I got it. <laughs> All right. A couple more minutes. I don't know where they are, but. Um, I don't know if there are any Met fans here, but they actually did some, they might have done something right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I've been reading about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, a billionaire bought them, and I normally oh, don't, I, I don't care for them, really, but at least he's a Mets fan. <laughs> I did see that, I did see that in my email <laughs> inbox. Because I'm like, oh, it's the first time I've ever seen a fan of a team by the team. <laughs> Like, oh, he might care. He might care. He might spend money in, a right, in the right way, you know. It would be thrilling to see, like, oh, okay, in the offseason, we have, like, maybe, like, you know, a, a center fielder and a starting pitcher, right. and it's like, oh, we actually were able to acquire all of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something as simple as that. Right. I mean, we, got, we have enough of these uh, uh, owners that are bad in New York. Dolan, you know. <laughs> Uh, Dolan's great. What are you kidding me? Dolan's a great owner. <laughs> I think he should quit. I think he should quit being an years. owner and um, play some blues music. You know, <laughs> that's what he's best what? at. <laughs> Wait, you're telling me JD in the Straight Shot isn't in your iTunes favorite like recent you know, your playlist? There's not nothing like a there's nothing like a multimillionaire to tell you about the blues. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, watching the Knicks will give you the blues. So, you know, maybe if he's yeah. watching the games, I don't know. I mean, if he's, he's the one who decides, he's the one who decides the trades. And they're all bad, yeah. <laughs> Let's pick this rando guy and throw him together with this other rando guy. It's, it's, a, nightmare. it's a nightmare. And then let's um, antagonize all the classic Knicks. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, say, he should, like, he should do a press conference and say sorry to, like, Patrick Ewing and Charles Oakley. And every one of them. Yeah. And maybe sorry for taking Frank Milikina over <laughs> anybody else. <laughs> yeah. But especially Donovan Mitchell. Not not a great pick. Nope. Nah. I mean, I'm barely paying attention to sports. It doesn't seem as important right now, but like I look at it for a second for you know, but I'm like not as into it. <laughs> It's difficult. It's weird it's with the, without fans in there. It's been weird. I mean, I, I always can watch the Yankees, but it's been it's definitely been a weird a weird experience. You know, very truncated, strange experience. I mean, you play sixty games, you usually have a hundred games left, so it's hard to really even gauge the results. Oh, I meant to ask you, Makai, how's uh, blue blue cups doing? Are they? Are they I don't. I, I I don't know. I I might stop. I have a, I have to do something tomorrow, and I might be in the area, and I'm going to stop yeah. by and check. Um, the owner, I text with her or I message with her, and I haven't. It's a very small place, okay, so yeah. probably people are just going in there for pickup. I can't see how people can be inside there very much. 
So I haven't heard anything. I hope they're still, I, you know, they haven't answered me. Like her or her husband, um, the owner, in a while. So I hope they're okay. I do too, yeah. Yeah, I like I check it. I check in, I check their website. I, I think at first people were going there to buy coffee, but I don't know. A lot of things going out of business, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I wasn't going anywhere for a while, too, so. All right. Um, okay, that's enough. I think we have, we're waiting on one other person, but we'll just, I think we're just going to, we're going to get going. Um, okay, I sent him the link. All right. Um, hi, my name's Micah, and welcome to the Risk of Discovery reading series virtually. Um, we've done like three or four of these now, and, um, you know, slightly, it's a, we, we're doing it a little bit differently. Like if we were in person, I would give you the poetry prompt in person, and you would sit there write it for a while before we started the um, open mic. And uh, so, um, and I usually, like, I, I do like five, I do all of them, I do five poetry prompts and I emailed it to everyone instead. So if you want to, you, you can still hold on to those. And I also posted it on Instagram and you can do it later. Um, so the first one of these poetry prompts I did is write a 14 line American broken sonnet called Broken Links Transformed in the Shadows with, um, with words un, un, and using the, I mean, using the words unprecedented bricks, pandering play and fiction. So broken links transformed into shadows. In the beginning and end right now, there is no case for consequences. The vultures are circling Oh, our decaying frames with bricks waiting. The Wi-Fi outside the cafe, restaurant, department store is non-existent or spotty, while our hearts are exhausted by grief at the continuous murder, death, tragedy, climate degradation. Nothing is being regulated, especially the use of the word unprecedented, which I hear as has already repeated itself or happened again and again. And only recently have we opened our eyes for the first time because it was so blatant. Right now, even when we dress up in our, um, dress up in our most vaunted ghost, we appear to be pandering to the status quo who would rather throw a pebble when it requires a boulder or more. I wake up every morning in crusty eyed delirium hoping for a respite that allows us all to breathe, play, get a digital social media propaganda makeover, then send signals to our cohorts in the underground, not in stalemate, but unity, deciphering, analyzing, and discarding the worst kinds of fiction, only reshape the whispers of truth into a whole once more. So there's that one. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Um, woo -woo. The second one I'm going to do is the uh, the ten line, five word per line poem, and I uh, called the lie jumped over the smoke to avoid so surveillance. The lie jumped over the smoke to avoid surveillance. I will escape this cake. Orange glows are not real, but manifestations of golden minds. You like my hair? my blank, brilliant, better stairs. I am the tallest skyscraper, the most prolific of hackers, never choking on dry crackers. All of you are too, abla too ablaze to see chaos in my maze. So there's that. And I'm going to do one more of these. I'm going to do number three. Write a 15-line poem. Line five should be the lucky ones carry boulders in the clouds. Line 10 should be the ugly mind is the, the defiant in the face of logic. Boulders in the clouds. The forgotten history is our history. It is like the threat not so sticky at the undercount. The bully wolves ordering the wannabe wolves to murder and pillage the citizens free in democratic concrete jungles. The lucky ones carry boulders in the clouds while Godzilla naps in their caves down below at the front of the mountain, pretends to be another, and you must repeatedly 
um, grant a refund. So you need therapy as a result of your online therapy. The ugly mind is defiant in the face of log logic as they stampede to the song Macho Man, masked, <laughs> unmasked, like they're in a Black Friday Matic Monday sale at some department store. The mango will soothe my digestion, or so I hope, as I dream of holidays on spaceships to fantastical, bizarre planets that are unpolluted by greedy, racist beings content to die in a landslide for patriotism. So thank you. There's that one, Boulder in the Clouds. And um, awesome. Thank you. And our first, uh, our first open mic is is Linda here. Yeah, I got here. Oh, there you are. Okay. So our first open micer is Linda. Everyone, Linda Kleinbob, everyone. Hey. Uh, how many minutes? Is it three minutes or five minutes? Um, we, we don't have that many open micers, so you can do five. All right. I recently had. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Sorry, I was late. I. Okay. Anyway, um, I recently got some poems put into Home Planet News coming in uh, the November issue of Home Planet News. So I'm going to read a few Home of those. Okay, cool. All right, this is called Black Eyed Sparrow. Black Eyed Sparrow sits in the newly pruned bush, wondering where his habitat has gone. Sunlight now hits branches that were once his hideout perch. Branches cut from trunk, his perch a limited view. Cumulus cotton candy white clouds hang low to the horizon. Within my grasp, city yard is quiet now, birds chirping, calling out for what I do not know. Thunder of past tropical storm in the distance, a muffled baritone looking for attention. Air conditioners hum in the still humid heat. I am the watcher, show me how you grow. Garden cucumbers hang long on the trellis, this small green space of mine. And this is called the fifth. I found, I find solace next to a radio playing a song I know by heart. My horoscope spoke truths, fear of an unknown future, loss of home, humanity. Radio song, sing me my troubles. Caress me with melody. It's cold and rainy, the businessman announced. It's the fifth week in solitude. People will begin to crack. Let's incorporate a virtual happy hour. Join in with the drink of your choice. And um, this is an ABC Darian and it's called Pandemic. A virus attacks the lungs. Breath of life is stolen. Congestion, pneumonia, in two weeks death. Everyone could be a carrier, so follow the rules. Guidelines for survival, hand washing often. Isolate. Just stay home. Keep a positive attitude. Loneliness can be painful. Make use of your telephone. No one is immune. Our cooperation is needed. Pray. Quit procrastinating. Get a job done. Remember, spring is a new beginning. Tulips push through dirt, unearthing chlorophyll. Value the gifts of water and earth. Examine the entire picture. Yellow sun will rise tomorrow. Zebras are still black and white. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Linda. Woo! Yeah. Woo, woo! Awesome. Um, um, is, Thomas, yes. is Thomas C here? Thomas C? Colchino? No? All right. Um, please welcome our next open micer, Hian. Everyone, Hian. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I, I live in San Jose right now. I grew up in New York. Uh, I'm going to read two poems. Uh, it's going to be it's something pretty new. I did some revision, but um, uh, it's uh, basically quantum. But it's like uh, right now, California have really bad wildfire. So it's something to do with that and um, something to do with the uh, losing electricity. <laughs> so just keep that in your mind. <laughs> when I read this, uh, and here it goes. Um, just give me a minute, I'm trying to uh, bring this up. Okay, so the first poem, the title is called, sorry, I have to lower down. Okay, Upper Olympics. Daylights are lost in September 9th. 
Once many lives are deformed and dull. The blue sky is gone and lost, nowhere to be found. The sky is smoky from the fire, so foggy she thought she was in San Francisco. The sun is beaming in smoke, the yellowish orange sky, as if everything and everywhere is painted, paints of yellow, orange, and red. It is like as if early Halloween is here on September. She is so confused and astonished as she stares at the unfamiliar and unrecognizable sky. Where is my beautiful sun? Where is the light? Everything is just tangerine like in a horror movie, wondering if a apocalyptic is coming. God is sending us messages, warning and foreshadowing this future. future. God is telling us humans to wake up, be awakened, otherwise you will see what you fear and you will live on fear. We have seen so much and felt it in our bones, emotions running down. We don't know where we are running to and where to. Foolish and selfish beings that we are, we become forming into the hideous monster, stealing, lying, hurting, and killing. Merciful Lord, please save us all. So um, that's the first poem. And okay. I hope you're okay and everyone's okay with family and everyone's okay. Up there. Oh yeah, my family's in New York. They're very, they're all safe. My parents and my brother and all my friends in New York. They're all good. And uh, everybody in my family over here uh, watch, I only have a grand aunt who lives in, uh, um, uh, in Seaside by Monterey. So um, by Sand City, she's doing great. So I'm grateful that everybody's doing well. <laughs> and some of my friends and who lives in Portland in Oregon right now, uh, it's pretty bad over there too. She told me the sky is pretty orange there, like really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And I could tell, oh. so. mm -hmm. uh, because when I go outside, it smells like literally like smoke. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, the my next mm -hmm. poem, I I wasn't sure which one to read, so maybe you can pick one for me. The one of the <laughs> titles is "Endless Clouds," or mm -hmm. it's called "Mother Nature on Actions." So anybody else, anybody interested? Mother Nature. Okay, Mother Nature. Okay. So I picture reader Danny says Mother Nature on Actions. Okay. <laughs> so here it goes. Mother Nature on Actions. Jeez, now that is a frightening heat wave. Skyrocketing temperatures over 100 degrees, dry heat and wind without humidity, heat advisory and warning. San Jose is an NA. It hit us like an unpredictable storm. Now California is living in COVID-19 along with the El Sol de Furiosa. El tiempo es muy furioso. Mother nature on action, she is on the move. People are sleep deprived from stress, working at home in a heated room. On August 17, early Sunday morning at 5 a.m., she woke up and then the morning was just madness. She hears heavy raining fall through the open windows by the living room. She peeked through the blinder by her patio door in her bedroom. And then suddenly, the lightning strikes. A flash of light, thunderstorms that sound like a bomb. That, terif that sound terrified her. And she couldn't go back to sleep as if there was an earthquake in a, and in a war zone. She starts to worry about the parasol on her patio because she left it unfolded and was afraid that the lightning was striking. And for sure, the gossip winds were ready to break it. After she came back inside and lay down back on her bed, she hears frightening sound, a sound of horror. She hovered in the rails that the traverses the unconsciousness and the consciousness. Sleepless thing, feeling exhausted, started her morning with a cup of coffee. So many things are happening in the world. The coronavirus, presidential campaigns, natural disasters, and violence. Humans are becoming so self-centered and evil. And as a cliche it is, love is all we need right now. Someone who are willing to care enough to go through your suffering. We live in hope, trying to survive a day, breathe for another day where happiness arrives. Peace, inner peace, please. Come inside. Thank you. Thank you, Hian. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, 
our, our, ne our next reader is uh, Matt Waters. Please give a round of applause for Matt Waters, everyone. Hi, Micah. Uh, thank you so much for, for doing this and providing this awesome forum. I really appreciate it and uh, looking forward to the reading. Uh, so I did prompt uh, three um, uh, in advance of the reading, and uh, this is what I came up with. Um, the night is darker, wilder, and I tell myself, watch your ass hopping on the exit ramp because the living drive like psychos during a pandemic and the lucky ones carry boulders in the clouds. As the cage service road court slips out of periphery, you see a solitary 1222 teenager mimicking Luka Dunchik's step back three pointer to an audience of overhanging decaying leaves captive in the fluorescent orange. The dreams of a boy man in the corner of my eye, which must turn toward the road for the ugly mind is defiant in the face of logic. I just dropped off my love in the lobby of her apartment complex where she walks into the glass. That was splashed with screaming sirens back in the mournful march will never make sense of. And that was called uh, Just Drive. Um, this other one I, I wrote, uh, I don't even remember when I wrote it. Uh, it was one of those things where I started thinking about something and was just, you know, overtaken by the need to write about it. And uh, it was uh, when the unrest kind of came to my neighborhood uh, to a degree, um, the protests and uh, everything. Uh, I, I had a, not a personal connection, but there was an incident where I lived, uh, where I grew up, uh, a neighborhood away from me in Whitestone where I grew up. And um, I was kind of overtaken by, by this. And I, I recently tweeted, it's a work in progress, but I'll share it with you. Uh, it's called Too Far. Uh, Puffy is still saying it's all good as you steer through the perennial boulevard with the same candy store crossways from the same McDonald's underneath the same cloudless clean sky you've known since you were a child when these slain kings were splayed across the front page of the post like some kind of warning to any other aspiring Icarus out in the projects you and your teenage friends could only fantasize about while slimming, slinging dime bags through open portals in your assimilated Euro enclave. And you are the young supreme normalcy pretending to desire new identities separate from the father and the president bombing some country with green, green fire in their static, unreal sky. And now back here have to be a masked present from March till today's eternity. Unemployment check, old Yankees game, steaming hot summers gone by, trying not to lose my mind, remembering Derek Jeter stepping to the plate to hypnotize, pulling into my spot by the water thinking I have a poem to write, thinking about Clayton Bigsby, a high school vision of a fully integrated, unpro unproblematic society. Sure, didn't my black friends drive their buddies to the drug deal thinking nothing about the next 10 years, only the pleasures of this mad city? What the hell we got here? The New York Yankees, Broadway, fluorescent stairwells and apartment complexes under fire escapes with locked doors leading into Narnia. Are we in the same place now? Are you scrolling your phone for a reason? Or did you get popped for my crime? Did you do actual time? I was born white. Or is this someone else's poem, not mine? Some MFA intellectual sizing up my free ride. I don't know. Man, what are we doing tonight? Puffy said back then, money, hoes, and clothes. And maybe we thought, by believing the same thing, we could both be right, searching for the same pleasures in those snow-dusted, brown-booted Timberland nights. The money ran out, the hose got old, the clothes had to be sold to pay a quarter of the student loan. Are we in the same place now, or are you still doing real time for my crime? That's Thank you. That's a lot. Thank you, Matt. Matt Waters, everyone. And, um, our uh, final open micer on list, Noah. Noah Levin, everyone. Big round of applause for Noah. Uh, thank you all. I'm sorry, give me two seconds. I just started to get a friend texting me Mets updates. I got to silence this. <laughs> nobody, will, nobody will hear me talking while my phone goes off. There we go. <laughs> all right, so, uh, oh man, I switched up what I was gonna read because uh, I was really inspired by different folks reading. So, uh, uh, so this first piece, Mika's actually heard this one uh, last time he heard me read. Uh, but I don't think anybody else has. 
so this is, uh, is a piece I wrote kind of recently, just a few weeks ago, but I actually wrote this, kind of wrote a bare bones version of this a bunch of months ago. Um, I had COVID pretty badly. I think a few people on this call probably know that. Um, but uh, I had COVID pretty badly way back in early March, uh, and I'm still, it's still affecting me to this day. And just as I was coming out of it, like the worst of it, uh, starting to hit early June, and that's just when really, you know, late, late May, early June, and that's when all of society exploded. So this is just kind of me, what I was experiencing. Uh, so this is called Recovery at the End of Times. Post-COVID drains my being. Can't stand, can't think, energy gone. I'm in a fog too often to admit. But life forces an irrepressible apparition I saw in my dreams. My awareness is coming back slowly while history is happening all around me, and the world is taking a stand. Click on the news. 20 million jobless, elderly lost, safety trampled, racial injustice, knee on the jugular. I can hear change calling over there, out there. Police batons, rioters, masses, protesters, rights trampled, take a knee, cry and voice, generations scream, passing current societal construct bears weight on soul cry a tear no more. Stand up, fire in the sky, gas cloud on the clothes of those that march. Qu quarantine eruption. Society must change. Shh. It's quiet on my block now. It's after curfew. I'm sitting in my seat, resting, recovering. I can breathe again. Yesterday, I went outside for the first time in months. Legs gave out eventually little victories. And history is happening while I'm watching, living flotsam who wishes he could stand. No, quiet now. Stay still as night's breeze reinvigorates withered mind, being, body, self. Inhale, exhale, I'm alive. Right, and Next piece, so this is a piece I wrote actually some time ago. This is, uh, um, so for a long time, about 12 years or so, I used to co-run a group called the Buffalo Readings, which was kind of like a school of poets. Uh, we came out of New York City and we started off like up in the Bronx in this like kind of abandoned squad up in Mott Haven. Uh, and uh, uh, we literally had like a fire drum to keep us warm. And it slowly grew out and uh, yeah, and it ended up going like through the country and whatever. And um, over the years. So I actually wrote this when we were starting a branch out in Portland, uh, Portland, Oregon. So it's called Dedication of the West Coast Buffalo, but truthfully I use it as kind of like a, I think I've sent it to them once, but truthfully I've been using it over the years as really a dedication to other poets. Um, so I'll dedicate this all to you. So this is called Dedication of the West Coast Buffalo. 3,000 miles may separate, but the spirit is immeasurable by lengths of land, although created in the gleam of the fires of the Bronx that warmed our bodies but inflamed our gasoline-laden souls. But the matches sparked in the distance in the land three hours before now. So stand strong amongst the herd, because the others are a bunch of sightless bastards that we buffalo unite against in our loathing, even as their fire amidst the night's darkness in a way that flickers shadows of solace, nothing even in front of those who have sight. Lead the charge in the land that faces the other way to its ocean, but yet face the correct way, every way, for all things of the spiritual warrior and lay low the naysayers who do not and will not understand until a candy Teflon coating composes everything we must digest. I like my poison with vinegar because it makes me stronger and I'll stare down the fool who gave it to me till I lay dead on the earth to conceive me. Our spirits unite as our blood keeps us individuals. Buffalo! And then last piece, this is real short. This is called, uh, uh, you know, Romance Belongs in Poetry too. Uh, this is called Pi, a mathematical love poem. Uh -huh. I looked her in the eye and said seductively, you know, the center of your diameter is the beginning of your radius. So let's take our love and reach out in all directions perfectly equal. Multiply our radius together combined, 360 degrees in perfect constant ratio to the greater circular reaches of our outer whole. Transcendental, irrational, pi! <laughs> all right, thank you. Oh, thank you, Noah. <laughs> all right. Um. Okay, so no more. Anyone else want to? Anyone else want to read something that hasn't? 
before I uh, introduce Emma. Okay. All right, so. Emma is an, an essential writer from Staten Island who has always had who ha always has the longest name on the open mic sign-up sheet, the many attitudes of Dennis, the slam champion, spoken word poet, award-winning essayist, journalist, workshop facilitator, and self-proclaimed overweight starving artist. The former New Arican poet, Cafe Grand Slam finalist, is a contributor to the collaborative audio project Queensbound 2020 and to We Carry Us, a virtual open mic, which is a response to the COVID-19 global pan pan pandemic sponsored in part by NYSAI Press. Dennis' work has been published in the New York Times, New York City Haiku. His editorial, When I Was Homeless, appeared in the Daily News. His additional publication credits include the Pangolin Review, Maternal Journal, Eclectica Magazine, and various anthologies. He has a new book uh, coming out, and I believe he has a program, which he's going to probably plug to. It's on, in September 26th, I believe, that you can register and it's for his new book, Mistaken Identity Crisis. Anyway, give a big Risk of Discovery round of applause for M.A. Dennis. So this, this always happens. You know, you, you spend so much time getting your list together of what you're going to read, and then somebody named Noah comes, and he does some stuff, and now you have to just, you just mess up my whole order, Noah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, same thing happened to me with previous poets, you know. You just yeah, let's, 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 let's piggyback, starting to uh, continue with the love. So this is a piece, uh, I'm, all, I'm going to be reading all pieces from my new book here, Mistaken Identity Crisis, published by Nightside Press. So this first poem is entitled LLP, Love Filled Liability Partnership. Love is the thing with feathers, plucked clean and grilled over an open flame. Love is a text message to your ex, which reads, you stole my identity, but not my hope. Love is like having constipated diarrhea, like knowing they're full of it, but you still can't get them out your system. Love is leg day, and my legs are in pain from, from running from pain through your mind all day. Love is when they walk in the room and you see their hair blowing in slow motion, even though there's no breeze whatsoever. Love is cheesy, like baked macaroni and cheese made with five different cheeses. Love is geometric, messy triangle, emotional trapezoid, concentric objects of affection. Love is the point where two infinite parallel lines intersect. Love is building a future together on top of a cemetery filled with things buried in the past. Love is breakups followed by makeups, or vice versa, or versa vice. Love is common sense, cutting off the video camera and leaving the interview room so heartbreak can have five minutes alone with you. Love is being at odds and thinking of ways to get even, but settling on forgiveness. Love is buying a soul jug of milk found in the orange juice section. Love is unrequited longing. It's carrying a torch for someone until hell freezes over. Love is show me your scars and I'll show you mine. It's Humpty Dumpty's partner telling all the king's reconstructive surgery men, if you did it for the six million dollar man, you can do it for him. Love is timing, knowing exactly how long a hard boiled egg takes. Love is a free trial period canceled one day too late. Love is acceptance. Love is not feeling in the mood for a love-filled love poem, but listening anyway and afterwards wanting to hear another. And now the poem that I had originally planned to open with. <clears throat> But thank you for that 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 uh, improvisational inspiration, Noah. And I'm glad you um, I'm glad you recovered from the COVID. Let my poets go. The beloved Toni Morrison once called up Nikki Giovanni, who hates having her sleep interrupted, 
and woke her out of a nice nap to ask, is it okay to be a full-time writer? I'm no Toni Morrison, but I too wonder, is it okay to be a full-time writer? Is it okay to neglect a God-given gift in the name of I got bills to pay? Damn it, Jim, I'm a writer, not a doctor. Although I <laughs> and boldly go where no pain wants to go, the final frontier, a poem. It feels quite therapeutic to say, poems can possess commercial appeal, but poems can't be commercial. Poets are not God's gift to corporate America. They are put on earth to speak. Maya Angelou silenced herself almost five years, put her voice in a cage and didn't let it sing. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. Zora Neale Hurston said it. People can be slave ships in shoes. I say, let my poets go. Let my poets be free like refreshments. Let my poets wear t-shirts that read, poetry is my superpower. By the power of Luke Cage converting to Judaism, sweet Hanukkah, let my poets go. Poets put on earth to speak truth to power to speak the people's language, to speak for those who can't, to speak in public places about people who piss us off, to speak the words of Audre Lorde and the Wu-Tang Clan. Your silence will not protect your neck. Poets, put on earth to speak, even if it means being forcibly removed from the premises by an armed guard who accidentally shot someone before on purpose, but knew how to get away with murder. Tell Infernal Affairs, you thought your gun was a bright yellow taser. Um, Read it. Uh, Risk of Discovery has is, is always been one of my favorite open mics. And one of the things I've enjoyed about it, one of the unique things is, you know, the writing prompts that Micah gives. So I also did one of the, the writing prompts. So mine was, uh, I did writing prompt number one, a 14 line American broken sonnet entitled Broken Links Transformed in the Shadows using these five words, pandering, unprecedented, bricks, play, and fiction. Broken links transformed in the shadows. Jumping off old bridges into rivers, words pandering to audience on edge, both unwise, neither unprecedented, but telling someone to jump off a bridge located in Brooklyn, when they reside way in Staten Island. Well, <laughs> that might be something new under the sun that shines upon neo-Gothic bricks under stress, suspension supporting tension, heavy holes, bodies tethered in shadows, water waits to make its play on the land, impact of landing in water ripples, fate, a broken clock leaps off a future as our fiction gazed at Medusa. How, how am I doing on our uh, time, Makai? Micah? Um, you're you're good. You have plenty. Okay. All right. So let me uh get some of the original. Okay. <laughs> So actually, I'm, I'm out. I'm local. I'm live. I live in Staten Island, and actually, um, the the very uh, famous legendary poet Audrey Lord, she lived in Staten Island for a long amount of time. So, um, she's been a, an influence on some of my more recent writing. So, uh, this piece is entitled "Receiving Feedback from a Black Lesbian Mother Warrior Poet." In my dream. 
Audrey Lord slaps me, then rips up my poem and says, you'll thank me later. The next night, I go back to sleep and turn the other cheek because poets need feedback. And sometimes that requires a firm hand. This piece is entitled, uh, Never Breathe Again. <clears throat> after Eric Garner, after George Floyd, after any black person begs to live while being choked to death, you hear it from cold hearted mouths to black ears. If you are talking, if you can say, I can't breathe, come on, you're breathing. Please, you don't have to be a medical doctor to know such a callous comment is as full of bull as shit can get. I only need to be a person who's had his breathing cut off against his will, and I am. The bully wanted a volunteer on whom he could practice Sergeant Slaughter's finishing move, the Cobra Clutch, and he pulled me from the audience. Even though I never raised my hand against my will, the bully wrestled me into a sleeper submission hold and he squeezed. As I begged for air, he squeezed harder. As I started seeing stars, he squeezed until I don't know how long my blackout lasted. Maybe as long as the song by Tony Braxton, Breathe Again. I just know when my power came back on, I dashed down the hallway like a madman, yelling, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't. In that moment of yelling, like I lost my mind, I was breathing. But in my mind, the trauma of suffocation stuck me back in time, still remembering how I cried aloud for air, begging my bully for a breather, telling him politely, repeatedly, please, please, please. Ah, yeah. How many more should I do, uh, Micah? Um, you. I mean, you could read for about ten more minutes if you ten want. More? Oh, okay. All right. I, I think um, I, I don't want. I, maybe are, are you going to do a second round? See if anybody else. Um, wants I can. To I, I don't usually do that on this you but okay. if we have more time I, I'll, I can ask you know. okay I think I'll, I'll, I'll do I'll do three more okay. and, then I'll, and then I'll wrap it up yeah. okay sounds good this piece is entitled dad which stands for dishonesty accompanies depression my children are well versed in depression they don't ask me, Dad, how are you? Thank you so much. Is everything okay? Oh. All right, sorry, hold on a second. My children are well-versed in depression. They don't ask me, Dad, how are you? Is everything okay? They don't ask such questions because they know I'll lie. Fine, not too bad, happy to be alive. I used to tell lies driven by libido, but my days of lying to get laid have gone the way of the passenger pigeon. Today's lies are not told to get me into someone's bed, but to get me out of Monday morning pleasantries, because seldom does someone expect you to sincerely answer, so how was your weekend? So my children do not bother with formulaic Q&A 
Instead, they question around the bush. Did you get out of bed today? When was the last time you showered? Did you drink any water? How many donuts did you eat? Are you having thoughts of not writing? Going to drink some water? Yeah, I drank some water. Everyone knows that my mental health is not too bad today. <laughs> Shit, isn't it a fertilizer? She would call me a lying ass piece of shit. And it was the truth, but it hurt. Hearing her say that inflicted tremendous pain. So I stopped lying on the couch and got up and worked hard on my spots until I changed them. Today, I'm a changed man. I keep it in my pants so they don't catch on fire. For me being a liar, liar, like Jim Carrey, I want to be a true man. Honestly, honesty is the best policy you can get with a pre-existing condition. I swear, right hand raised with my left placed on a stack of Bibles I carry everywhere I go, I've been transformed. Pinocchio with a nose job. And now, she only calls me a piece of shit. Our relationship is growing better. I'm the fertilizer. Okay. If at any time, during any point in a dream, while arguing with your alien abductors, you tell them for the third time, I don't pee in outer space. Yet, they pull the mothership over and force you to go stand behind an asteroid and urinate anyway. If all those things happen while you're asleep, wake up immediately and go to the bathroom. And I will close out. I started with love, so I'm going to end with love. And this poem is entitled LLC, Love Loves Company. Love is Charles Dickens' duality, the best and the worst at the same time. It's giving your two cents by dropping dime which means placing an anonymous call to the Department of Sanitation and requesting a special pickup because your ex's new partner is trash. I still love you. I love you like a Secret Service agent taking a bullet for the president. I love you like a PowerPoint presentation loves bullet points. I love you like if we're in a horror film, I will make sure you live to be in the sequel which means I will tell you, stay here. And I'll go downstairs in the dark to investigate why the dog is barking incessantly. If an unfriendly ghost or an evil clown dressed as a demonic nun kills me, know that I love you. I love you 3,000 multiplied by Andre 3000, which means the power level of my love, it's over 9,000. I love you from A to Dragon Ball Z, from Allah to Zeus, from Amiri Baraka to Zora Neale Hurston. If our eyes are watching a God that is love, you can see why it hurts so much. Giving up your only begotten heart, leaving it open to attack, by letting down your guard in matters of romance, remember the referee's instructions. Protect yourself at all times. When entering the hole of a rabbit called love, the deeper one goes in, the more you feel like a rookie proctologist, probing, searching, and seeking the answer to a rhetorical question. What is love? Love is a friend who had sex with your mom. Love is a motherfucker. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank M.A. Dennis, everyone, applause. Unmute yourself, applause. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, M.A. Dennis, and um, buy his book from the link he sent you. I don't know if it's on Amazon or other venues, too, but I'm sure you can find that out. Yeah, actually, for the chat book, I'm just, uh, did, did you post what I sent you, the, the message I sent you? Yeah. Yeah, you can just contact me directly, and I and I will mail you uh, a copy. Okay. And this is from I'll the chat, it, NYSAI it. Press, right? Oh, uh, right here. I got it right here. Okay. Oh, I sent I sent it to you again. I'm sorry. I mean, I sent okay. it to Noah. I apologize. No, it's okay if you put it on the chat again. Yeah. We can, you know. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, yeah. Does any, I mean, if anyone wants to do a second round of open mic, uh, tell me now. No, Noah, you want to go again? Oh, the only piece I got queued up is like real long. Otherwise, you're gonna have to hear me shuffling through papers. It's like seven minutes. Um, it's any, cool. Is there anyone? Is there anyone else who wants to? There you, go. <laughs> not, you can do it. It's I just have to see how many people want to. Only only if folks want me to, because I don't want to take up everybody's time. What does everyone say? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go, and it okay. was really great, Micah. Thank you, and Emmy. Right. It was really great to hear everybody. Right. It was wonderful. I'm going to another one later today, so I want to get something to eat. So okay. that makes sense. Bye. That's Good a night. smart decision, Linda. Thank Good you, night. Linda. Bye. Okay. So if there's uh, no one else, no, we'll get uh, we we'll we'll get you we'll get you next time on that unless there's right on. <laughs> unless there's one other at least one other reader. Anyway, um, I just wanted to I'm going to do a little plug. Uh, this is a book called Poets of Queens Anthology, edited by Elena Jennings, who runs the Poets of Queens uh, reading series. And uh, I'm in this, I have five poems in this and a bunch of other Queens poets. And there's gonna be a reading October, <coughs> October 4th, I believe at 2 p.m. So look out for that. Um, and our next uh, Risk of Discovery reading series is uh, gonna be um, October, the Tuesday, October 15th. Um, so um, that'll, some point soon that'll be posted with uh, whoever the feature ends up being and um thanks for coming i, I hope you're all safe uh, everyone's healthy and their family's healthy as they can be and keep risking keep discovering keep imagining and i'll see you next time thanks oh, everyone thank, thank you, you. Emily Dennis. Bye his book. Yeah. Right. thanks everyone thank have you good night. Right. have a good night bye bye, bye jenny Hey, M.A., thanks for doing it. Thanks, okay. Noah. Thank you for having me, my well, Yeah, thanks, M.A. Thank you, Dennis, and thank you, Noah. Thank thanks, you, Ian. Those thank are you, great, new work, great new work, Ian, really. Thanks. Send that yeah, it, is. it was a fresh was one. Fun. I have some other good ones. I'll read it the other time, next time. Yeah, <laughs> save it for the next one. All right. Thanks. All right, be safe.